Hi everyone, welcome to Summer Art Club. Today we're going to be talking about printmaking and making our very own Collagraph prints. Some of you may not know what printmaking is or have heard of the word. If you've ever used a stamp and a stamp pad before, then hey, you've made a print. You maybe are a printmaker and you didn't even know it. Today we're going to be making a specific type of print called a Collagraph print. So the stamp, or what we're gonna call the plate, because that's what it's called in Collagraph printmaking, gets inked up with ink, just like this, and then we make a print. I think there's a little cat here. The nice thing about printmaking is that you can re-ink your plate, or stamp, over and over again, and you can make what's called multiples. So we had one cat, and all of a sudden, we have six. They're taking over. This is what we're going to be doing today, but again, a specific type of printmaking, collagraph printmaking. Kala is a word that comes from the Greek word to glue. We will start with gluing down a bunch of interesting textures to make a kind of collage, and then we'll ink it up and print it. We want to be thinking about a few things when starting our project. The first thing is texture. We'll also want to be thinking about transparency and opacity, so things that are see-through and things that aren't. We'll also want to be thinking about layers, stacking different materials like paper or inks on top of one another to create interest and depth. First up, let's talk about texture, which happens to be one of the seven elements of art, the others being shape, space, value, form, and color. Take a look around the house for things that are fairly thin and small, but have some interesting textures that you could glue down onto your collagraph plate. Texture is a surface feel of something, is a material you're thinking of using smooth, rough, hard, soft, bumpy, woven, or maybe jagged? You can find out by the sensation of touch. Think about all the different textures out there. In my collagraph bin here, I've collected a bunch of interesting textures. Paper doilies, pieces of felt, bike inner tube rubber, textured fabrics, they all work really well. But just using cardboard to cut out different shapes works great too. It's amazing the amount of art supplies you can find in your recycling bin. Now that we've got all our textures together, we'll for sure need a piece of cardboard that's about four by six to use as our base or plate. This is what we'll glue all our textures to. We'll also need some tissue paper. A few colors cut up into small pieces is helpful. We'll need a glue stick, scissors, and white glue, as well as a spreader for our ink. A butter knife from the kitchen works well for this too. Let's talk about our inking tools. To be able to ink up our plate, we'll need something like this, a baking tray from the kitchen. It will clean up well with the inks that we're going to be using. And this tool, which is called a brayer, which is used in printmaking. We have the handle and the metal piece that holds the rubber roller in place. We use it to roll out ink and then transfer it onto our plates by rolling the ink on. Brayers are great tools, but if you don't happen to have one at home or didn't pick up one of our material kits, no problem. I'm going to show you how to ink up your plate using a brush, a stiffer hog hair is good for this, and acrylic paint. If you're interested in one of our kits or where to get your own brayer, there's some links in the description below. The final things you'll be needing are some white paper, thin printer paper will work great, and some tape. All right, now we're going to start gluing down our textures to make our collagraph plate. Feel free to place your textures down however you like, but my one suggestion is to do your best with layering your textures. We also want to make sure that we glue things down fairly well so they don't get pulled up when we're inking them. Now, we've got all of our pieces down. You can see different textures here. Some of the thicker textures as opposed to the thinner, they're all going to print slightly differently. And again, everything needs to be stuck down fairly well and maybe left to dry for 10 minutes or so because the tacky ink that we're going to use next might try and pull it up and unstick it. Some areas are a little bit busier and some a bit more plain. 
You can do whatever works for you, but best to glue on pieces that are not too small as they might pull off later. Not that that would be the end of the world either. We're learning and experimenting here. Maybe take a minute now to get your glue cap back on and all your texture bits away. For the next part of our project, we'll be jazzing up our base paper with a tissue paper collage. We're going to want to think about layers again, as well as the words transparent and opaque. Tissue paper is quite transparent, so we can kind of see through it, especially when we glue it down. So let's get out our scissors and glue sticks and start layering on some colors. Here's a quick tip though. It's a good idea to put your glue down on the white printer paper and then stick your tissue paper down on top. Now I've just put down some rectangular type shapes, but you can add any shape that pleases you. Notice here you can see the darker purple color coming through the lighter blue paper. That's the interesting transparent effect happening. And let's see what happens when the green is dropped down on top of the blue. Oh yeah, there we go. We've used our scissors to cut out all of our shapes so far, but you can also tear your papers to get some interesting edges. All right, my base tissue paper collage is done. But now, how are we going to combine our texture plate and our tissue paper collage? Let's get out the ink. There are many kinds of ink out there. Speedball is a good kind because it is water soluble and easy to clean up. Ink is a bit different than paint because it's a bit tackier or stickier. And this ink is designed to do exactly what we're using it for. Squeeze out a short line of ink about five inches long. Use your spatula or butter knife to sort of flatten the ink down a little bit. Now we can try out our brayer. Dip the rubber roller into the ink and move it forward. Well, that's all very fine and well, but it's a bit gloppy and only on one part of the roller. So that's the thing, you just gotta keep going. So, we're rolling back and forth, back and forth, but each time I'm picking it up and letting it kind of roll itself along so that the ink is evenly distributed. And then you start to get this lovely sound, almost like Velcro. Almost like that. And want to keep going back and forth and you can change your direction, that's fine. My suggestion is not to cover your whole pan, mainly because the ink dries pretty quick. And then you're not gonna need it all over here. You just need a little square. So try and keep it in a square if you can. If you're really getting into it and you cover your whole pan, that's just fine too. But this is my suggestion. Now taking a closer look at the roller, you can see the ink is covering it evenly and has a small pebbly texture to it. That means it's ready to use. Keep things from getting too messy, set down your brayer with the roller facing up. Get a piece of paper below your plate to catch any extra ink and mess. I've used a piece of white printer paper here, but you can use any scrap paper you have around. Tape it down if you like. This is the best part. Let's ink up our plate. Keep rolling, Summer Art Club kids. Pick up more ink from your pan as you need it. Notice that the texture pieces we added are now orange. So it doesn't matter what color your texture pieces were, they will print the color that your ink is. Also, see how some areas are quite covered in ink compared to areas that are not. Areas that are thicker and stick out more get more ink rolled on them. Try and pay attention to what you're creating. Watch for all the small, exciting details that show up. Okay, this plate is ready to print. Get a clean sheet of white paper taped down to your desk now. Line up your plate in the middle or however you want it to be. Find your tissue paper collage, flip it over and line it up with one of the edges of your base paper. Make sure to tape it in place. Now we wanna press our tissue paper collage into our plate with the pads of our fingers. Try not to shift your paper around and make sure you get all the edges. You can see some of the thicker elements showing through our paper a bit. 
This is called embossing. Let's take our tape off, set it aside. We can use that again later. And carefully, carefully my friends, we want to now what's called pull our print. And this of course is the most magical part. So we can see where the little bicycle tire uh, was, the round black um, shape, the green foam, it transferred nicely. We can see the lovely lace, that looks pretty good, and the doily um, up here in this corner. There it is there, and we printed it here. The other thing, now that we've got our print, um, we can see the tissue paper coming through the orange ink. And so we're starting to get all these wonderful layers colors, textures, um, and transparency happening just in one print. We're going to finish this print in just a minute, but first, if you don't have a brayer in ink, I'm going to show you how to get a print using paint and a brush. We'll use a new Colograph plate, a brush, a few tubes of acrylic paint, and a plastic lid of some sort for a palette. You don't need too much paint here, just a small blob about the size of a dime in a couple colors. It's always a good idea to get your brush nice and wet before you start painting. This brush has fairly stiff hairs and should work well. You can mix your colors together a bit if you want and add a bit of water, just not too much. After that, you can just paint it onto your plate. Oops, I forgot a piece of scrap paper underneath. You want to move fairly quickly with this part because acrylic paint dries really fast. You won't get much of a print if your paint is dried. Move that brush! Let's get that scrap piece of paper out of the way. Just like we did before, line up the edges of your papers and print. This piece doesn't have a tissue paper collage on it, but you can add one to yours. Because we're using paint, not ink, this process is a bit tricky, so do your best. I would suggest not spending too much time here. When working with acrylic paint, move quickly. Now we can go ahead and pull our print. Sometimes bits we glued down can pull off, especially when using acrylic paint. But no worries, you can try and pull them off after, or maybe they become part of your print. This one inked up fairly well. So let's go back to our first print. I want to show you how to, what's called, addition your prints. In pencil, printmakers will generally sign their name or initial on the bottom right-hand side of their print. In the middle is where you can add your title. I'm going to go with Summer Orange. And on the left-hand side, printmakers will add what's called an addition number. There's only one of these in the world out there, so I'm going to write one of one. So. How you do Colograph prints. We'll need our plates, our textures, our paper, our ink, or paint, and away you go. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye!